there, hobby homesteaders. Welcome back to Peaks Peak. Today, we're gonna to talk about what you need to adjust the hydraulic pressure on your BX23S. I've got a 2019 BX23S tractor, and I would like just a little bit more digging power with my backhoe. I am satisfied with the power of the loader. I feel like mine came pretty well adjusted from the factory, although uh, prior to making this video, I had not tested my pressures. I feel like I can put as much stress as I want to put on that front axle in the way that it operates right now. So I want to be careful and not overdo it. So I'm going to limit myself to 2000 PSI thereabouts, maybe 2100 depending on how it works out. But I also am going to keep that in mind when I'm using the front end loader and try not to overdo it with that. So those are some things to consider before you go adjusting the pressures on your BX23S. I'm not here to tell you what it can handle. I'm not here to tell you what's legal in regards to your warning. I'm just here to tell you how to adjust your hydraulic pressure. So the first thing you wanna do is get you a hydraulic pressure gauge. This is a water-filled 3000 PSI gauge I picked up off of Amazon for less than $15. It's a quarter NPT thread, which fits the fittings that are already on your tractor. So you don't have to go buy a flat face fitting. This is the flat face fitting off of my backhoe that I just borrowed so that we could do this test. You'll need some shims. Now you can buy those in a kit or you can look around the shop if you've got spare washers that are about a half inch, then those shims will work if you can find the right thicknesses to adjust your pressure. So if you watch the video, I'll show you how to figure out what, what thickness you need in order to adjust your pressures properly. So the first thing that I did when I got my gauge in the mail is I went out to my backhoe, which is in the equipment shed over by the barn, and I took the flat fitting. Um, you want the flat faced female side fitting so that you can put it on your pressure gauge here. And that's simple enough, couple of adjustable wrenches and you can take that off of there and put some thread tape on your uh, pressure gauge and you're ready to go with this. That's the tool we're going to use to measure our pressures. Now the next thing I did was grabbed my spare bolt trays, which is this tray and this old cooler full of bolts and nuts. And of course, all the little small ones are gonna be in the bottom. So I had to dump them out all over the workbench here and dig through and find me some washers that I could use for shims. Once you've got your supplies all ready to go, you can bring your pressure gauge over here. And when you put your pressure gauge on, it really doesn't matter which one of these four connections that you use. It's just going to determine which way you pull the lever in order to get it read pressure. And when you pull it the opposite direction, then that will relieve the pressure. So if you put it on the blue connection, then you're going to push the lever out to the right. If you're using the red, you're gonna pull it over towards you if you're sitting on the seat. If you are putting it on the yellow, you'll pull back or it's like raising the arms. If you put it on the white, it's like lowering the arms. And same way, if you put it on one of these, you use the up and down function and the opposite of the one that you have the pressure on will release the pressure off of your gauge. And you wanna release the pressure before you try to take your gauge off of here. But it's, it's just as simple as that. Now, you can also test the pressure on your backhoe feed lines. You're just going to disconnect this hose right here and hook your flat face connector into this hose to check your pressures. Now, this one is not controlled by a lever when it's just on bypass mode like this, when it's not hooked up to your backhoe. So when you start the tractor and hit your target RPMs, that's when you're going to get your reading. And when you shut the tractor off, the pressure will relieve itself and you can take your gauge back off of it. And that'll give you a reading on the backhoe side. And that's what tells me that this pressure relief valve is also going to control the pressure for our backhoe movements. Now, there's a 22 millimeter cap on this pressure relief valve right here. So you'll need a 22 millimeter socket and I used 14 inches worth of extension to get me out here where I could easily put a ratchet on it without busting my knuckles. And you just take that cap off. It's not going to leak a bunch of hydraulic fluid so that's not really a concern. You'll use a, lose a few drops. If you're worried about that, throw you a towel under it or a, a bucket or whatever you wanna do to catch those few drops. But take that cap off and that's where you get to the spring and the place where you're going to put your shims in. Now. I will tell you, as we go into this process of installing these shims and testing, that it does matter how tight you tighten this cap. And I tested that by putting my pressure gauge on, testing the pressure, 
and then tightening it just a little bit tighter to see if the pressure increased, and it did. In fact, that's how I set my final pressure right at 2000, was I snug that cap up just a little bit tighter. So that being said, if you're one that wants things to be exact, then you might wanna throw a torque wrench on it and determine how hard you wanna torque it down or mark it so that you tighten it to the same spot every time. That way, you're setting it to the same specs every time. Otherwise, when you're doing tests with different shims, you're going to get different readings based on how hard you snug down that cap. Now, all things said and done, what really matters is what you leave the pressure at when you're done. So, if you set your final pressure based on how tight you tighten down that cap, then you're where you need to be and so it doesn't matter anyway. But I just wanted to share that bit of information because that cap does not bottom out completely. It will tighten up a little more depending on how hard you torque it. Now you're not going to make massive swings in your hydraulic pressure based on how tight you tighten that, but I did make 50 pounds of difference based on how, high, how tight I tightened that cap. Now, don't make a mistake and over tighten it. I have a tendency to do that when I'm working on things. This has an O-ring on the cap to keep it from leaking, so it doesn't have to be crazy tight but just keep all that in mind as you do this. So I picked out four washers that fit inside the diameter of this pressure relief valve cap and are about the same size as diameter of this spring because that's what we're trying to do is just shim this spring tighter so that it applies more pressure when we put it in and screw it down tight. So what I've done is the first one we tried was this thickest washer and we ended up somewhere around 2400 PSI. I don't wanna run it that high, probably would be okay. I'm reading on the internet, most guys running them at 2000 PSI with no issues, and I've heard that 2000 PSI won't void your warranty or anything, so take all that stuff up with your dealer. This is one of those deals that uh, modify it at your own risk, do what you're comfortable with. Don't listen to my advice or anyone else's, you do what works for you. But for me, I want just a little bit more power. Now I'll tell you, this machine already, I can flatten the front tires on it with the 1800 PSI that I had. So I don't need a lot more power, but what I would like to see is, because I'll utilize the curling power to get more out of the loader, and I want a little bit more arm strength. So I think it will help me with that. The other thing is, I'm looking for increased digging power with the backhoe. That's what I'm after. So, got this one, and it's good and clean. I'm gonna drop it in there. And this is literally a 10 second swap. So you can do the tests, check your pressures, pull it back out, swap the washer and try a different one. Or if you're spending the money to buy a kit, which is great, go for it if you have the money to do that, then you can test those different shims and it works out just fine. It doesn't have to be the official kit. It makes no difference whether you use a washer or whether you use the shims that they send to you. Um, I spent about 14 bucks on a pressure gauge and I'm using one of the connectors off of my backhoe and I'll put it back when I'm done. So guys, if you're thinking about ordering a shim kit online, if that's what makes you more comfortable, great, go for it. But I wanna show you how this works just so you're more comfortable and you understand what you're doing here. When I took my spring off from the factory, here's what I took out of it. I took out this spring, you take this cap, pop it on your workbench, and I got one flat shim and a washer out. So I'm using washers to shim mine and I'm going to continue using the stock shim there. But what I'm going to do, because I've already tested several different size shims with this and I've come to the conclusion that I really just need one more thin shim. So I'm gonna stick one more washer underneath that flat plate. Now I can also tell you as long as your washer is the same diameter as the spring, then it really, that part doesn't even matter either. But just so that it looks factory, when I put it back together, I drop that down in there, and you probably can't see down in there, maybe you can, but it is just the flat shim on top that came from the factory, and the, water, the spring sitting right on top of that. So, let's go do one more test and see if we come in between 2000 and 2100. Put it together just like that. You get a straight shot. If you got a 22 millimeter socket, Stick it right back in there. Snug her down. And let's go run a test.
So guys, we ran through all of our tests. We got our hydraulic pressures set right at 2000 PSI, which is where I wanted them. I am not going to put the loader and the backhoe on and do any tests today because I don't have any major projects to do. Also, I'm getting ready to put the mid-mount mower on and mow the yard tomorrow. So I will somewhere down the road, the next time I do a project, share with you how this thing performs at the 2000 PSI mark. And I'll let you know how that works out. I'm not necessarily expecting major differences, but I think that I will see a difference in the way that the backhoe digs and operates. And I'm looking for just a little bit more pressure out of the backhoe. So I'm hoping to see that in our performance, but that's what we're going for. But I also don't want to overdo it. I want this machine to last me for years and years to come. So I'm kind of being conservative with the way that I set mine. You can make your own choices and do it however you like. I am not a technician. I am not an expert. The information that I shared with you today is what I learned in doing the process myself. I hope you have found it interesting. I hope you find something helpful when you decide to take this on yourself. And if you have any questions, be sure and leave those in the comments. If I can't answer it, I'm sure there's some expert out there who will. So I appreciate y'all watching. Y'all have a good day.